Hi there, it's Peter McMahon here. Um, I'm just on a site, put in a couple of chillers uh, a couple of years back and uh, I thought I'd take the opportunity. One of our service guys is doing a service here, so I just dropped in to say hello. Um, very nice project, uh, nice part of Dublin, as you can see. Uh, good scenery. If you take a look around there, you can see there's the Samuel Becker Bridge in the background, the convention center and so on. Um, anyway, I'll bring you in here just to give you a look at the chillers. Um, this was a very high efficiency project, BREAM certification. So um, we worked with the consultant where they wanted pretty much the most efficient equipment they could get. So we've selected a couple of inverter screw chillers. Um, you can see them here. Actually, I have the cover off one of them around here. Okay. So you can see here, these are the inverter screw compressors. Bitter is the make, very, very reliable. Um, they are free cooling, so again, I'll bring you around the far side, I can show you the, the free cooling connections. So basically, we have a common header, as you can see running down the side. These are three circuit, three screw compressors, inverter screw, like I said. Uh, we're teed off to each evaporator. So the water's basically coming in here, comes down, goes into a three-part valve. So if the ambient temperature is low enough to provide free cooling, the water goes on down uh, through the free cooling coils, gets cooled, comes back around uh, and on down through the evaporator here. And um, if the water's satisfied, no refrigeration comes on. If the water temperature isn't satisfied, refrigeration obviously comes on and does the cooling instead. Um, very efficient uh, flow protection, uh, very important, really good to have. Temperature gauges and all your isolating valves. Binder points invaluable. A lot of people don't even know what a binder point is. Show you close up there, that's it there. You can pierce that with a pressure gauge. Uh, or with a temperature gauge and you're going directly into the water so very very good component invaluable cheapest chip so 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 well worth having um, these chillers uh, we supplied with a multi-chiller sequence controller and um, the logic being when chillers ramp up to 100% or close to 100% they're at their most inefficient so there's no logic in running chillers up to 100% load if you have a multiple of chillers you're much better off running them in part load so for example if um, you get to let's say 70% load, the efficiency is dropping off. The multi chiller sequence controller understands with the algorithm that it's not as efficient to continue running them at uh, 100% load, so it'll enable the next chiller. So, um, actually, I'll bring you into the plant room here. I know Ronnie is in here doing a little bit of work. So, hi Ronnie, how are you, Peter? Good, and um, I'm just showing the multi chiller sequence controller here. Okay, okay, so can we put on the display here? Okay, so you can see here, now there's actually a newer version of this that's come out since, but hopefully you can see that there. Um, basically we're monitoring the common inlet temperature, the common outlet temperature, and a as a consequence, uh, there's a corresponding delta T uh, to load. So obviously as the delta T increases, the load is increasing in your system. That's just temperature differential, by the way. Um, as the load increases, um, the multi-chiller sequence controller is programmed with the different types of chillers and compressors that are on the system as a whole and it understands uh, based on the algorithm when to enable the next chiller so it's unlike the very old-fashioned method where you would have typically had uh, duty and standby or duty assist and they would have often ran a BMS would have enabled the chiller ran it to 100% unless there was a fault and if there was then it would enable the, the next chiller to come on but it was very uh, in, unintelligent let's say and um, so you can see here we've uh, a big, uh, it's about 1.1 megawatt water, uh, sorry, air cooled water chiller, free cooling, like I said. Uh, we have another one the same there, and we actually have another um, smaller multiple scroll type chiller over here in the background. Um, and the logic there is when the load is, is so low um, that there's no logic having the screw chillers on that they're short cycling, the, the NRL will kick in then. But again, it's all fully automated um, by the multi chiller sequence controller. So, uh, really nice job, uh, very proud to be on this one. Um, worked very well. Winthrop, uh, I give them credit, did a really nice job here on the installation. Um, and uh, the consultants, obviously, uh, uh, it was great to see them taking on board new technology, very efficient uh, equipment. So there you go. Um, by the way, I do have a separate presentation on the multi-chiller sequence controller. Again, just look me up on YouTube and you'll see that there. Okay, cheers.